What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. Do you have a presidential hopeful hangover? No? Yeah, it was just yesterday, yeah. Uh, yeah, we spoke to him. And um, in the lead up to it, you know, it was, it was quite exciting. Mm. Uh, I think we teased it on our social media and everything, right? Mm. And uh, yeah, just reading about uh, Uncock Song and and listening to his interviews. All, I, I mean, I felt like yeah, we we did we put in quite a lot of work into mm. uh, researching a bit. So, more do you feel him. you did your part for Singapore? No? You know, we just finished NDP. You went to watch the parade. Now you're like you're doing your duty or not, Terence? No, absolutely. I think uh, given that we are not going to have presidential rallies, or at least mm. they're not encouraged, mm. I think platforms like ours are important. Mm. Uh, and I, I mean this completely, you know, like uh, seriously. Like mm. uh, you know, we want to be the a platform where people can have uh, can listen to presidential hopefuls and candidates actually have real conversations and mm. not just sound bites of like their favourite Singapore hawker food or yeah. which influencer that they're hanging out with and they just briefly talk about the death penalty and things like that, lah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, there. Were, I, I wish we had more time and space to cover everything. But uh, yeah, this, uh, at least we, we you know, the, the burning questions and the, the back of our minds were yeah. answered, lah, right? Yeah, and I mean, that's what also I'm super appreciative that he came and we spoke to him and we didn't talk about how he stumbled into finance no. and like study physics yeah. and all that. Fuck all that. Yeah. We've heard it a thousand times already. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to get the other candidates. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, like, like you know what you said? Sometimes I see on social media, there's all these gatherings where people go. Uh, and they're so curated. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, at the end, the guests who go, all they post, or like, yeah, some of them do pen down their thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Joshua mm-hmm. Simon, he was invited to one. He penned down his thoughts, like what he discussed with Tarman, what yeah. Tarman agreed, yeah. uh, what well, responded. But some are just like, oh, took a picture with blah, blah, blah. Then mm. I'm like, had a good is... chance, I had a good chance to talk about the future of Singapore yeah. and his vision. I'm like, what is his vision? Yeah, you know? exactly. And then it feels like, why are they having this, the these meetups in the first place? Then I realized they're all gonna have to deliver speeches, right? Mm. During the thing. Mm. So maybe they are kind of getting all these thoughts and all, and that can factor in. Because apart from that, what else is the purpose? Or maybe it's just because like um. Yeah, like, uh, uh, like do you invite all these people who have followings and all, but they just post a picture? Mm, mm. And what's the point? Outreach to the youth. Uh. Just Is because it? you see your favorite influencer post a picture. <laughs> hey, don't, don't, um, don't shit on what the, the, the power of influencers and, and how they can sway public opinion or so. Just from a photo with a one-line caption. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Just knowing someone that you respect a lot is using a product or endorsing someone or a product. A product, uh, the presidential product, I mean, which in some way it is. What you're seeing is a package. And this mm. guy has a team behind him and everything. Yeah, It's a package. Uh. So I, I can totally understand uh, how they're picking and choosing which influencers to see. Mm. I mean, our podcast is not a walk in the park. La, you know, They come mm. here, they're going to be challenged. Uh, I, I don't think you and I uh, give them like you know softballs about mm. like talk about what's your favorite what's your favorite hawker center or mm. things like that and it's an hour long um, you sit down cameras on you we don't edit and things like that and mm. and we don't generally don't like you know uh, give a pre-approved list of questions or mm. curated uh, list of questions before mm. so it is you have to think on your feet uh. and I know probably some people for some people they're not comfortable doing it mm. okay fine but that's why I respect uh Ng Kok Song for for uh doing that. Like, hey, why are you gonna adjust my, my sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, like you don't want me to hear myself talking. Oh, so so a, for those who are listening, like, I mean prick. we have a volume control for the headset that we have. We're literally talking about people <laughs> don't want to come on our platform and talk, and then you're silencing me. He's no, silencing I turned the me. wrong dial. Yeah. I turned the wrong dial. So it's I wanted like, to reduce my volume because Terrence is his voice is damn loud in my head. Uh. Uh, I was making this uh, okay. important <laughs> point and then you are literally censoring me as I'm saying. Okay, it, okay, right? yes, yes, yes. But no, yeah, but, yeah. No, I really respect uh, Ng Kok Song for mm. coming out and whatever you thought about him, whatever we thought about him at the end of it, mm. we had the chance to hear him out also. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, Will we have the chance for other candidates? Though? I mean, like that means that we are going to, we might be going for one of these influencer events, mm. but we are going to try our best to get every candidate on lah. Uh, yeah. and, and have like a long discussion about their thoughts and just, yeah, just ask questions. Maybe people are thinking, we are thinking that uh, 
not the more common questions lah. Yeah, yeah. So we we're, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. try. So uh, how you voting for who are you voting for? Yeah, no, <laughs> ah, still a long way. First of all, we yes, don't yes. even know whether it'll be the more than one person to vote. Mm. We'll only find out in a few days time. Correct, correct. So everything that people are talking and all, it might be moot because it might only be like uh, one candidate lah. Correct, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, your vote is secret lah. Don't don't need to tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, like, interesting, like interesting. Interesting, interesting. I mean, I, I'm very interested to hear what uh people think of the interview. Mm. I think for you and I, we walked away with uh, you know, quite quite clear uh feelings and emotions about things. Yeah, yeah. Uh we'll probably share them, you know, like like maybe late closer to the date or if we know that they are really candidates and maybe all, after or, we get all the all four lah. Then we we can we can see lah. Okay. How many fingers do I have to cross? I'm like trying to cross everything now, but yeah. but it's it's not easy lah. It's not easy, and then yeah. people say, "Hey, you should do this. You should get them. You should get." We are trying all ways because, and avenues, but yeah. it's sometimes as Ng Kok Song says, "You do your best, but sometimes some things are out of your control." Yeah, right. Yeah, because we are also fighting a very tight like. I mean, their schedules are probably packed lah, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean they they. Their approach, I don't know. There, there are different strategies, also different. But we are going to keep trying, lah. So. Hey, so uh, our, our schedules are very packed, also, lah, right? But what we we and I think you yesterday you were like, hey, Terrence, why you going to say tiny podcast? We're not tiny. Yeah, podcast. we're not. Like, but like, I'm like, okay, that was that was a joke. Man, everything. Terrence, <laughs> everything, every word matters. You think Ang Kok Song uh, understands the sarcasm behind it? The nuance. The but, nuance, yeah. But it's true, uh, We also really like you know taking the the time to do this and and mm. each one of these like we do a, quite a bit of reading and research all that so for us also it's a yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's a time, time. Yeah. yeah but but we we i i especially doubly so because the unrallies i feel like we have to do this it's yeah, almost like yeah. a public service la. and then plus shout out to tristan we recorded yesterday morning boom at night it came out yeah that's why everyone is enjoying it like, yeah yeah um, in their bedrooms on your commute in the in in bed everything yeah <laughs> in bed or well, in their bedrooms and yeah, in yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly cool man but yeah but uh yeah so I mean we got some interesting topics today mm-hmm. uh lately the news whenever we are deciding which topics also there's a there's a lot to choose from la. yes right yeah so we got some interesting zingers but before mm. that yes uh, what do we always like to like to say Terence uh we always want to remind everyone you know we're on Spotify on YouTube uh any good uh podcast platform that you are you are on as well uh please follow or subscribe to our channel uh, or our show because mm. uh, that's really the way that we know that we're doing something right or so, right? Yeah, it's, it's the only positive feedback we get. It's not so much about, uh, I mean, comments and all are great as well, but like in terms of immediate uh, numbers and all that, that's how mm. we know. Yeah. And if you want to work with us, uh, even if you're a brand, if you're an intern looking for an opportunity, if you're looking for mid-career switches, uh, yeah, just hit us up at contact at ministryoffunny.com or DM us on any other social platforms because yeah, there's there's a bunch of exciting stuff yeah. that's gonna be happening. As Mr. Ng himself says, don't be lazy. If I thought you were gonna say us, don't be cocksure. Oh don't be cocksure. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, don't yeah, be cocksure. Sorry. Don't be lazy. The campaign the campaign slogan you pitched him didn't fly. Like, I just yeah, had to yeah. say it, like, I just had yeah, to say yeah, it. Because yeah. the whole time we were so serious, I felt we needed to inject some lame joke. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know some the lame joke. The funny thing is you watch the YouTube video. Uh, when you say that line and then I'm like, I'm like, hey, the, the joke didn't fly. The camera's on us. But it didn't show his expression of like, basically it was like, uh, what the hell is that joke? So maybe about? we can we can use it as an excerpt. We we can just post that. The we can BTS find that footage. Yeah, 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 find that footage. But yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, that joke didn't fly. Uh, <laughs> cool, man. Yep. All right. Cool. So, yeah. um, I mean, amidst all the presidential uh stuff that's happening, mm. a big mm. piece of news dropped uh yesterday, I believe. Last night. I mean. Last night. Yeah, there was a. Uh, kicked off by a press release from the police force mm. that there has been a huge anti-laundering um, uh, raid where 10 mm. foreign nationals yeah. were are going to be charged for offense, offenses including forgery and money laundering with an estimated value of $1 billion in cash and various assets seized, mm. frozen or issued with prohibition of disposal orders. Basically, they did a raid across mm. like a bunch of properties in Singapore, caught yeah. a bunch of people and found a bunch of money and froze a bunch of shit. A bunch of, more than just money, a lot of like things. Yeah. 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 It is a, uh, it's, it's a uh, crazy. La. And I mean, on one hand, like you read it, it was literally like uh, on 15th August, 
more than 400 officers from the Commercial Affairs Department, the Criminal Investigations Department, Special Operations Command and the Police Intelligence Department mm. conducted simultaneous raids mm. at multiple locations, including GCBs mm. and condos. Mm. In prime how, areas. Yeah, yeah, how fucking exciting is that, man? Mm. Uh, and there sounds, was even like a chase, right? Like one, someone was... was uh, we call it a chase. La. I mean, he jumped out of the second <laughs> floor of his GCB Landed in the I don't know, in the first floor and got injured and then was hiding in the drain yeah. and then they arrested him. That's yeah. like the chase in Singapore, like, You know, US got like <laughs> helicopter people running or yeah, driving yeah. off with a pickup. This one jumped G- from second story of a GCB. 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 <laughs> GCB yeah, All those high ceilings, uh. yeah, 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 yeah. No wonder he had to be taken to the hospital. He regrets. He regrets the high ceilings. Uh. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah that's right. So I mean, I was surprised the detail to which uh, the police force issued their press release and their post on Facebook. Yeah. Basically, they gave like one paragraph summaries of all 10 individuals. Mm. Um, and I think there are eight, uh, 12 assisting with investigations yeah. and eight more uh, wanted by the police. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they also included like 21 pictures of all the shit that was seized. seized. Mm. Mm. Uh, eight, 22 pictures. There's like pictures of money in safes, like buttloads of Stacks. cash. Yeah. Like we're talking like drug, mule, cash. money. Cash, yeah. yeah. $100 notes that I rarely see, you know, anyway. Yeah. And just wrapped in plastic or put in like, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, safes, then yeah. jewellery, watches, mm-hmm. uh, gadgets, handbags, handbags, yeah. wine, uh, brick bears. Brick uh, bears, bear, bear, yeah. Bear brick, bear or bear bricks. Yeah. Which is those, those, Atsi so, bears that you will see in the yeah. houses of like rich people, rich people and yeah, all. Yeah. And I'm sure everyone, because there's some I've seen, uh, uh, even where I, uh, the, the closest landed properties to where I live, they have it in their balcony and all. Oh, I see, so I, I can imagine after this comes out, right? Yeah, like, yeah, fuck yeah. it, we yeah. put it back in. Yeah. Put it back in. Uh, cars, insane cars. And yeah, it just feels like, oh, okay. But then, like when, when, when you saw this, because it is fresh off the press, yeah. we are recording yeah. this on Thursday. Uh, what 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 were some thoughts that came to mind? Uh? Uh, no, the most immediate thing I think is uh, if you haven't already, please look at the Singapore Police Force post mm. and look at the pictures for yourself. Yeah, because the number they give, I tell you a number one billion assets. Yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. it's just like okay, fine, one billion, whatever. But when you look at the pictures, this is like wow, like ten people or how many however many people they caught lah. This all this cash, all these like bottles of liquor. All these expensive cars and and the GCBs and everything and photos of the, you know, all the watches and Chanel jewelry and everything. You just can't imagine this being spread across only ten people, right? And they don't even show the houses. Yeah, they don't. For fear of doxing or whatnot, yeah. which is fair, yeah. but they don't show the houses. You look at just their possessions in the house; it's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it's and, crazy. and and maybe because we are literally. You know, we were literally talking about, uh, I think yesterday there was a very big drop of like, you know, uh, videos about Singapore's reserves. And mm. So numbers of like in the billions and all that come up, you know. Then suddenly you're like, oh, wow, there's this group of 10 people who literally like are hoarding like a billion dollars, you know, mm. themselves in Singapore. And you always you wonder like, wow, how many of, I mean, this is only the surface. Like you said, 10 have been arrested. I think 12 assisting, assisting investigations, yeah, assisting. which we know could mean more than just <laughs> Like just sitting down and having coffee, <laughs> yeah, it could mean more than that, as yeah. as every evidence by what's happening in the Iswaran case. Mm. Um, but yeah, so yeah, like that. This might only be the the start, uh. and uh, yeah. So I was quite like sh- at first, I was like, yeah, it was the numbers. Then I looked at the details of every single person, and and just the photos, like one after another, just my jaw just dropped further and further to the floor, lah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the photos of the possessions. Yeah, like. the photos of the possessions alone. Yeah, yeah. and I mean. On on one hand, of my first thought was like, oh, how did they they find this shit out? And it was a very coordinated effort. Mm, they mm. said they got like a a, a tip off, and then they worked with multiple uh, banks. They worked with MAS, uh, and there were things called suspicion transaction reports that were submitted mm. by financial institutions. Um, and they didn't say how long it took, mm. but basically. Just from what I understand is that there were all these transactions, suspicious transactions happening. Yeah. They tied it to some accounts overseas and there was a bunch of sharing of info across financial institutions, the MAS, the police, and they pinpointed these people. Yeah. Which yeah. is insane because they are they are not Singaporean. Mm. Uh, and I think the police was very 
very careful to clear they're not PRs or Singaporean. Mm-hmm. Their nationalities span from PRCs to Cambodian to Ni Vanuatu. Mm. Uh, which I, I didn't even know that that existed. Yeah, but you know Vanuatu, lah, right? I don't, I don't. Oh, you never heard of Vanuatu? I never heard of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I, it's one of those today I learned kind of movements. Uh, the, and I, I learned the, the term Ni Vanuatu. Apparently, that's what the people are called. So the country is Vanuatu, and they're yeah. famous for like voodoo, a bunch of voodoo oh, okay, shit. Okay. That, that's that's your pop culture reference, Voodoo like. shit, nah. Yeah. Shit. So I know, I know. You better, I know, you better wash your mouth first, and then no. are you sure you're saying the right thing about the culture? Voodoo shit. Nah. No, there's a lot of uh, like uh, the the whole premise of voodoo practitioners and all. I think there's a lot of history in Vanuatu. Mm. Uh, of course, okay, okay, okay. I don't want to typecast and say yeah. that's the only thing that the country is known Voodoo for. Shit. <laughs> but they were propelled to global uh, 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 fame, I guess, a yeah. few years ago uh, with uh, Voodoo. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, yeah, so so when you look at it, you're like, oh, uh, that's, that's very far off. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you get Cambodia, you get Cypriot. Yeah. Uh, and then you look, oh, shit. No, and they, and they each, some of them have like, they're holding multiple passports yeah, as well. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, correct. Uh, multiple passports and I mean there's of course when you look at it uh, yeah there's a th- quite a few of them I'm looking at the Cambodian national was also found in possession of a foreign passport believed to be issued by PRC which is People's mm. Republic of China the Ni Vanuatu national also in possession of a passport like that Cambodian in, another Cambodian also in a passport so it feels like oh shit and there was some talk that they were in contact with each other yeah yeah right so then it feels like, oh shit, uh, that's that's huge. La. And mm. on one hand, I also was like, hey shit, okay, at least they were caught. Yeah. You know, all these organizations working together, you know, like, wow, Singapore pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you also had like a, another realization. Yeah, I, I didn't know whether uh, to be happy mm. that this was happening. Because, uh, yeah, where, I mean, I guess it shows that, yeah, the ill-gotten gains from illegal activity around the world, uh, it could be as... in. I'm not saying innocent. Like. It could be like online gambling, but it also could be, you know, all those damn scams you hear about in, in supposedly coming from places like Cambodia and all mm-hmm. that. Or it could be even worse. Like. We could be talking child trafficking, that kind of money, like, right? Yeah. So it's good that that kind of money is, uh, it's, it's you know, it's, we're, we're freezing it and we're arresting the people associated with it. But um, it really makes you question like, wow, how did... Uh, all this come in in the first place. Mm. And literally, I mean, they're not exactly hiding in the shadows. They're buying up GCBs. They're buying artwork. Um, in fact, if you find the name of the first person that they, the Singapore Police Force pointed out, you Google his name, his name comes up in like a, couple, like a website about uh, like talking about show flats and property. Mm. And apparently he had purchased two bungalows in Sentosa at one point and for like 36 million and mm. was like, uh, you know, and, and supposedly had links to a local uh, listed uh, company on the board of a local listed company as well. I mean, we can say what, the name is public. Yeah, yeah, the name is, it says yeah. no signboard, yeah. uh, uh, private limited. Like, yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, the my big question was like, wow, all this has been happening under our noses uh, and, and I mean, it's great that we, we are going out and catching them but how long have they been in our system and mm. how entrenched are they in the system, la, right? Mm. That, uh, yeah, la, you need an army of 400 people to sue and arrest them all at once because they're probably talking to each other and because they have a network going on already, la, right? Mm. Um, and yeah, la, you know, and, and, and kind of points to uh, what something that we were talking about with uh, Mr. Ng Kok Song yesterday, la, right? about in Singapore, there's these three escalators he talked about and there's those ultra-rich that come here and the escalators moving fastest and then they're in the middle and the lower income on the slower escalators. But then it tells you how much of those, on those, their ultra-rich escalator, mm. how much of it is really like, uh, you know, legit cases like the TikTok CEO, Secret Lab CEO, or Grab CEO buying a GCB versus like, you know, uh, a money launderer buying mm. GCBs and snapping properties up and driving prices up for cars and, and, and property and everything also, right? Mm-hmm. Which, so, it has, as much as this is another strata of society, it has trickle-down effects on everyone else, right? Yeah, it does. And, and I mean, like, uh, to, to clarify, I think the GCBs, they, there was no confirmation that they were bought, mm-hmm. but probably rented. Mm-hmm. Like, Sentosa mm-hmm. Cove was bought because yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. only place in Singapore that you can buy landed property as a foreigner or something. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, I think that there's some, some 
things there. And there's some elaborate story where he bought two properties and, and he, had, he yeah. is forced to combine them into one because he can only own one yeah. property. Yeah, which is it's like, fucking ridiculous. It's uh, showflatsingapore.sg. Show that's like, that's S-G. like when Halima talked about combining her HDB. The jumbo HDB. Right? <laughs> 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 but jumbo, GCB, GCB jumbo level. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, they were quite convenient like, you know, next to each other. I thought for my family can can combine yeah. all. I had to knock down a wall and, uh, you know, like a whole dungeon in between. Yeah, that's right. Storing my wines and all. And, <laughs> And yeah, the, the the more like as you were talking about it before the podcast and like like looking back also, yeah, it is it basically confirms the nightmare that we are all we all kind of know that oh there mm. is rich people with dirty money coming to Singapore. And whenever you see like oh this block of condos, you know, like two hundred units snapped mm. up yeah. by like this this family office from China or yeah. some stuff, then of course they might be doing Purely legitimate uh, businesses. They yeah. might be creating jobs for Singaporeans. Mm. But at the back of everyone's mind, I'm sure there's a bit like, oh, fuck. Is, are they just hiding their money in Singapore? Yeah. You know, you have heard Singapore be referred to as a Switzerland or Asia. Yeah. Where there's a lot of dirty money, but there's almost no questions asked. You yeah. follow our rules, you, we won't ask questions. Uh. Yeah. And this is all those fears coming true. Yeah. Because, and like what you said, right? The trickle down. Um, even like, I just uh, came across this article on Mothership 2022. Chinese national rents Singapore Queen Astrid Park bungalow for two hundred thousand dollars a month, mm. and that made the news. Yeah, uh, and you know, like you hear all these things about, in some way they are related, right? The rent of every strata of properties, if it pushes up, it will likely push up stuff below, mm. Because let's say someone can't afford like a GCB, oh, they're like, okay, let me just get a small bungalow. But then you can afford more than person who was already renting the bungalow. We've seen yeah. that people from condo to HDB, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can assume it, it happens at higher levels. So then it feels like, oh, fuck. This is exactly what we've all been talking about and being worried about. Mm. Our country being flooded with uh, money that is just pushing up everything. And who who uh, gets the brunt of it? Like, the, the middle class Singapore. Like. Yeah. So it yeah. feels like, oh, shit. And I totally agree with you. Like It feels like if they were talking with each other, and they were so open about it. Mm. I mean, human psychology, like, you're doing shit that you're afraid of getting caught out. You probably won't be as open. Mm. Mm. But if you're so open, is that this false confidence they have? Yeah, yeah. Right, it just feels like, wow, this is ridiculous, man. And off the back of, like, you know, corruption scandals, uh, mm. alle- alleged corruption with one of our ministers and everything. Yeah. It kind of worries me, like, like you know, mm. um, you know, like, uh, not, not, not saying that these two are linked or anything, yeah, but they're yeah. happening so close to each other. I'm like, whoa. Uh, but yeah, the, it, but it also kind of starts to, you know, even in my uh, layman, my layman lifestyle, mm. uh, I, I I see things on social media that I'm always like, yeah, there's this kind of thing happening in Singapore. Like what? Like what? I follow a couple, like, I follow a couple of, uh, I don't know why I would call them influencers or what, like, right? Rich people, uh. no, no, not rich people. Like, like, um, we, in our industry, we call them talents, lah, right? Uh. basically, good-looking people who appear, you know, are paid to appear in videos and shoots and and things like that, right? They're not necessarily actors or anything. Mm. I follow a couple of them, then I'm like, okay, um, you know, in acting industry, all that is really tough in Singapore. Like, so how do they? How's the day getting by? You know, it can't be. Not there's no car show or anything every other day mm. to, to sustain that, that kind of lifestyle. But I see them, you know, like um, eating very expensive restaurants all the time. I see them staying in expensive hotels in Singapore all the time. And once in a while, I will see like clips of them like almost like being the dealer at some private blackjack table. <laughs> yeah. And then there's suddenly a video of like, oh, girls coming out with sparklers and and bottles of champagne dancing, but not in a club or anything, like in a private room, dancing to an audience of I don't know who. It's the, all I see mm. is the, the entertainment, the performance. I see the chips on the table. I see a lot. Of, and it's a very nice area. It's not, we're not talking about like somebody's house and then like they just set up a table. I'm talking about like a very a room that is like made up for like that kind of thing. Like. Of course, it could be within the casino. And I mean, I've never been in the VIP parts of the casino, but suddenly I'm like, oh, you know, there's that level, that tier of lifestyle that some people are living and they're just flaunting the heck out of it and mm. they don't seem like they don't care that they're, they're, that people are seeing them and getting caught and all that. But maybe that's where, that's how these people are, are spending a lot of their time here. Lah, mm. You know? And, and uh, it just, I mean, maybe I'm just looking too much into it. Lah, but I always wonder like, in Singapore society, like, you know, can you really do all this kind of thing and 
and and not have people question you or, or and all that lah, right? But in some way, we have also leveraged that belief in mm. in the past, like our MOA videos, right? Yes. You know, there were so many things we that we did that were ridiculous on the street. Yeah. But in some way, uh, I I did feel that okay because everyone is generally like rule abiding and all. If we mm. do this, they will just assume it's we got permit lah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, that, oh, it's fine, you know. And yeah. and not to say, like, we broke permits, you know. I mean, we're very careful about if the place needs a permit, we will get a permit. But if the place is under, like, a common property, we just film there. Yeah, but yeah. it was almost like, because Singapore generally, we're brought up to be quite trusting. Mm, mm, I think mm. you don't have this inbuilt skepticism when you see wealth. Mm. But now, I think there's more of that. Yeah. yeah. You realise that, hey, it's, is it basically, like, those chips on the casino table, it's basically... Ill gotten money, lah. Right? Yeah, and then sometimes when you see like this, this, these people come out of like these fucking huge bungalows or cars, and you're like, oh, you look what really do? young. Yeah, what does he do? What do you do yeah. now? I would like, have like more like wait, wait, wait. second thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas previously, maybe when I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, he must have worked hard, you know. Yeah. Then I realized as you get older, like, oh, okay, you can work hard, but there's also other factors that make you rich, lah. But then yeah. now, yeah, it makes you think, oh, it's almost like uh there's something sh- is shady until proven innocent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and because of, of cases like this, like, like you look at it, yeah, like what Terrence said, you go look at the pictures and you look like, oh shit. Mm. Especially in the middle of every, like the general conversation about how, you know, things are getting harder, things are getting more expensive. Yeah. All the prices are going up. There's a looming economy crisis that hasn't come yet. You see this, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. So it's I mean, crazy. Yeah, my my thing is like I'm I'm nothing wrong with uh, rich people, you know, doing playing the casino, or whatever. Maybe it's a hobby or they enjoy it and and you know they like the mm. risk or that. But you know the argument of like um uh, that we hear from from people that oh you know when the ultra rich come here they create jobs and mm. the question what kind of jobs are are we creating like black <laughs> blackjack dealer. <laughs> Jobs or champagne, holding <laughs> bottles of champagne kind of jobs. Yeah. You know, what kind of jobs are you talking about, la, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. La. And and it's just, uh, like, there's this, yeah, there's this, now there's, every time I see, whether it's a Maserati or whatever on the road, I'll be like, in the back of my mind, I'll be like, oh, who's this person driving it? And, yeah, is he but one then, of those, one of those people? What, but then, okay, so, like, let's say, of course, this is like, assuming that everyone comes here and just fuck shit up. La. Mm. Let's say they got dirty money, they come here, but they, I don't know whether they pay taxes and all, but but they they do contribute because they had they, they spend here yeah. They spend here. They GST, they maybe. don't have like maybe all their ill gotten gains. They they leave it and they, I don't know, assuming benefit or doubt that they do create some jobs here and they follow the rules while here. Mm. But mm. the money is through ill gotten gains. No, but I cannot. I mean, that's mm. the whole point of like I mean our financial system and. Mm. And you know, know your client kind of things, and I think mm. everyone. Uh, it, that's why the I think the one MDB and then Jolo, the whole case was so it was so interesting because it wasn't about a guy scamming a company or what. He was basically, I mean, it was scamming the whole financial system, like You know, and and using like the the tricks of the trade to really just smoke his way through and 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 do really illegal things, like Right. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean the the whole trust in the system just falls apart, and the whole trust in your your financial or banking system falls apart when when there are bad eggs like this lah. Mm. Now we know like yeah lah, our everything we talk about rich people coming here, they end up is they they're crooks or so lah, you know. Mm. And is that what we want in our society? Is that mm. the kind of people that we want in society who are hiring our daughters to? to hold champagne bottles and, and dance. and oh, Now I sound like a boomer. Like, <laughs> this but, is what I'm like, Terrence. But, yeah, but my point is that, <laughs> la, is that, is that the kind of society that we we want to aspire towards, la, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, you can say, oh, but Vegas, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's Vegas, la, you know? Mm. But Singapore, we're still crafting our identity. We, we're not even, we're only 58 years old, right? We're not even sure what our own identity in the future 50 years will be. Uh, mm. But is it, do we really want to be, go that direction really? Like? But then, so, okay, so this is something that I've heard in the past, which I don't agree with, but <laughs> I've also heard from people who have worked in finance and maybe you also have some thought. Yeah. And this is like tin fall head and all. Like, um, even like you say, uh, take a country like Switzerland or mm. a country where you, you allow people to deposit money very safely. If that money can be utilized by the local banks to, you know, invest, get returns, 
and build more for Singapore. I've heard anecdotally that that happens a lot. Mm. And it's just we don't know about it. We laymen, we just walk around with our eyes closed. But it's almost like once you lift the lid, nobody will be happy with what goes on under the lid. Mm. So just keep the lid closed. Everybody goes about their life. And I remember hearing that from someone who was working in finance at the time a long time ago. And it stuck with me because it feels like, oh, it's almost like a... the world is not as kumbaya as everyone thinks, you know, the yeah. older you grow up. Yeah. And maybe, is that the way the world works, Terence? Yeah. Uh, to that, I I mean, you're correct. Lah. I, I think it's it's probably naive to think that, you mm. know, everyone earns their keep, lah, right? Like, mm. I work $1 worth of work and earn $1. That's naive. But at the same time, we, human psychology is that when you see your neighbor having more than you, inevitably it makes you feel something like right and mm. usually it's not a positive feeling and singapore is such a small cramped place when we see instances of like you know very 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 ultra rich people just down the road from mm. where where you stay in a more humble place and all that it creates a sense of uh, inequality that that is not about your income or what already like it's just about uh this sense of uh unfairness or even it can even create a sense of helplessness mm. amongst people like. and that's what i think uh, we need to guard against, uh, you know. So I'm not like I, I think I've said before. I'm not against people earning, uh, you know, money and everything. But then when that that money is used to, <clears throat> it's just about flaunting the wealth, and and it's used to, you know, like really differentiate between the rich and the poor. I have this, and you don't have it because you don't have money. I have access to a lot of things because I I I'm, I have I'm rich. You know, it just creates this sense of inequality in society and. Mm. I don't think that's good for any society or any group in the long term because it will cause tension and the whole everything might collapse uh, because yeah, of that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that, and and I think we have spoken about it before. So for a while, all the mainstream media were just waxing lyrical about this new person who got their GCB. Mm. You know, just mm. buy GCB, and it almost felt like, wow, GCB is the epitome of like you Success. made it in Singapore, yeah. You know, and I think a few, maybe three, four years ago, I even heard. Someone on TV or news, I don't remember who, but it was like, you know, uh, 10% of people live in landed or 5% and those are for the people who made it. You know? yeah. Then when you, when you hear that all your life and there's almost like this ladder you're climbing up, right? But then the people at the top, you get examples like this. I totally agree that it just feels like you're being cheated. Mm, mm, and mm. that is very, very dangerous. Uh, because now you see this, you're like, okay, on one hand, good that all these institutions are working together and all, but Holy shit, man. How long has it been going for? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, wow, wow. And I mean, I assume this is going to be discussed in parliament? I don't know, man. Like, maybe, I mean, the fact that the police have made arrests and that they're, they're, they're still investigating and, and, and or maybe they don't want to prejudice whatever investigations there are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, I, I respect the fact that the media release from the police was quite extensive. It's very extensive. Like, I didn't yeah. think it would be that extensive. I thought it would just be like, oh, 10 people have been arrested yeah. for suspicion, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they gave the details and, uh, you know, after you said you Google one of them and you found he was on the no signboard. But mm. I also found him in the magazine of the Suntufa, Suntusa Cove Golf Magazine. Oh. On one page, they welcomed their new member. I see, I see. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Su Hu Tien. Yeah, yeah. Um, Su Hai Tien. Yeah. So it just felt like, oh shit, all these people... And yeah, I mean, if you've got time, just just Google all the names. The names are all there and yeah. see whether there's anything that, that, that comes up because maybe, it is crazy. Maybe someone who's working in finance is listening to this right now mm. and saying, that's why you're poor. He's saying about us. Like, right? I got no dignity. La. You got no dignity. I got no, I'm not working, working hard. You just sit here and just talk. Just talk, talk all no, it's almost like if there's an opportunity to make money, rules are meant to be broken, bro. Mm. If, and at the end of the day, if it benefits society at large, yeah. trickle down effect. Why? Yeah. Is gambling Why? wrong? I mean, our company got casino, uh, Terrence. Yeah. Is you gambling know, wrong? No. Okay, why turn around and say, yeah, he yeah. stands corrected about yeah. casino. I just happen to be doing gambling in this foreign country <laughs> that I earn a lot of money from. Yeah. But they created jobs there. There were 100 more women who now sh- carry champagne every Thursday <laughs> night. No? Every Thursday night, they carry champagne, they get yeah. tips, and they can sustain their family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, interested to hear what people think about it. Because, I mean, yeah, what was, so overall, what was your feeling about this, reading this whole thing? Like, like you walk away feeling glad that the SPF did that job or what? It starts off that way. Mm. But then it makes me think, oh shit, uh, what else is happening? Like all the other things you see about 
uh, I mean, even like, if you go to a condo show flat kind of thing, just for fun, or like mm-hmm. you see in the news, 90% of show flats at this crazy per square f- uh, flooring rate just get snapped up in the opening weekend. Yeah. Then you're like, yeah. huh? Yeah. How? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, not not every one of the 10 were living in con- uh, GCBs. There were a lot in condos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then it makes you look at everything. You're like, oh shit, that whole two Singapore thing, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it brings back like, oh, I get, is it really that that way? So yeah, so that's where I left off. La. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, it makes me realize, oh, there's, I mean, we already knew that there's a lot of shenanigans going on in the underbelly of mm. Singapore and all that. But now, you know, it's like, it's at a billion dollar level, la, right? Yeah. It's like billion dollars. Like, like when, I saw the, when I saw the headline, I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Among 10 people, <laughs> one billion dollars. <Yeah. laughs> what? Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. 10 people, one billion dollars. Yeah. One billion dollars. One yeah, I thought billion. It was a, I thought it was a typo at first. Then I'm like, oh, shit. It's not a typo. Yeah. One billion dollars worth of like assets and shit. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah. yeah crazy, it's, man. Uh, you know, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy times, like, right? Mm. And, and I think uh, it's almost like we can't... Uh, it's, it's crazy times because like, as as much as we want to avoid talking about it, as much as we want to like siam the that place and that topic, yeah, <laughs> it will always come home to it, lah. Right? Always come home. Uh, and what is this place and topic that we're talking about, lah? Uh, it is the also came out last last night Wednesday yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, it came out at about at night about eight pm. Mm. Uh, it was a complaint against Mister Murali Pillay mm. lodged by uh, Leong Man Wai. Mm-hmm. So basically, it arose from the parliamentary sitting on third August, which was the the second day that we didn't go for. Yeah, yeah. where there was quite a heated exchange between Leong Man Wai and Murali Pile, mm. which was uh went viral and and if you watch it, it was quite heated lah. And basically, um, they were talking about like rent and mm. the the price of rent and all that. And Leong Man Wai said his uh, spiel. Murali came up and said, you know, like um something along the lines of Leong Man Wai having advocated for some form of low rent control. Mm, mm. To which Leong Man Wai came up and said, no, I did not advocate for Leong, uh, for uh, uh, low rent control. Yeah. And it became like a, a technical thing. Like there's low rent control and low rent. So mm. I think low rent control, from what I understand, is like, it's almost like a, like a, like a policy mm. that, that doesn't benefit uh, the, the greater good, right? Mm. Yeah, along those lines. No, I mean, it's, a, it's just a form of like uh, government intervention to uh, yeah keep, uh, de- depress uh, rents artificially. La. Yeah, as and, opposed and to just keeping like rentals at the market uh, rates. At la. a market yeah. rate because, or... I mean, there's a lot of, uh, probably a whole, we can do a whole podcast about it, but it's the criticisms is that it doesn't, uh, it ends up, you know, the, the landlords don't want to upgrade and take care mm. of, the, of the facilities because what's the point, you know, the rent's not, never going to go higher, you know. Yeah. So so that's a big criticism. And, and it's a control, thing la. in and of itself, la, yeah, low yeah, rent yeah. control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Murali said that he uh, that he accused Leong Man Wai of advocating some form of low rent control. And Leong Man Wai said, no, I did not say that. Mm. And they went back and forth. And if you yeah. watch the exchange, it really doesn't look good on Murali Pillay. Mm. Like he mm. went back and said, no, I did not say that. Uh, I wanted to clarify, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, then he kept on mentioning, oh, Honourable Leong Man Wai. Mm. Uh, and it was back and forth, back and forth. And then towards the end, I think he he himself said, I said enough, you know, and I don't want to proceed forward. Mm. Then I believe in that video itself, Leong Man Wai asked, um, can Mr. Murali apologize and retract his statement? Mm. Mm. Then Indrani, or the speaker? The speaker. I the speaker, yeah. Said, yeah. Uh, uh, said that, Okay, we cannot confirm now. We'll have to go back and look at the records. And Leong Man Wai said, okay, can I get his uh, um, like confirmation or commitment from Murali Pillay that he will retract it if it's proven that he did did say mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And then Murali said, no, I will not commit to anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing now that it's all public, you can look, uh, it's hard to deny that Murali did say that. And then now Leong Man He, did, la. he yeah. did say it, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and now Long Manwa is lodging a complaint. And I say he did say because yeah, people have taken the that clips clip, on TikTok yeah. and put them side by side, and it's very clear that Morali did say advocating. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah, broadly speaking, Long Manwa is just saying, hey, he's putting words in my mouth, and I yeah. don't want, I don't like that he's putting words in my mouth, and I want him to retract that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so when you saw this, like you know, I think you also watched that clip when it first came out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What were you expecting to unfold? Um. 
expecting to unfold. Yeah, for Leong Man Wai or what, what for, for him to do? I mean, if you look at previously what has happened, right? Mm. Uh, there could have been maybe uh, an apology on Facebook or something like that that someone puts out there and then then the opposition party member just accepts the apology and then they everyone <laughs> they call, call, call. A call call an apology so, yeah. like uh, very much like how Jameis Slim accepted Tan Chuan Jin's apology after the fucking populist comment mm-hmm. right and the, 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 it looks like it's just going to be swept under the carpet um, but I think this is interesting because it's off the back of the the parliament, last parliamentary session where Leong Man Wai uh, very specifically, uh, you know, he jumped on basically the the fact that Tan Chuan Jin had all these things going on, right? Mm, mm, mm. And he asked Indrani Raja why there was no formal apology for him mm. after Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan had said, oh, what, what school did he come from? Must be Lousy School. Mm, and that was also captured on the hot mic, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and then to that, Indrani replied that, oh, there was actually, if you wanted an apology, you needed to file a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> and then my wife said, okay. <laughs> Hold my beer, you know? <laughs> and so finally that that well, the result of him holding the beer has come out last night already. Like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so when like when I saw this, I was like, oh fuck yeah, uh, Leong Man Wai. Because exactly we were there when mm. Indrani said, right? Yeah. Uh Leong Man Wai, if if the member wanted an apology, he should have asked. Yeah. And yeah, yeah you could see his face, oh Okay. Okay, <laughs> you say, yeah. Uh, you say because he's had his fair share of run-ins, right? You know the Sashwe comment yeah, and yeah, like yeah. so so this one when he filed it, I'm like, okay, that's great. You are you are taking it to them like, after they literally told you what to do. Yeah. So right. I was damn happy he filed this because this is almost you it's not even like grey, it's so black and white. Murali did say that. Mm. But don't it, it, do you think it's very petty that he's asking for an apology and a retractment statement when literally I mean this is parliament, right? Where where it's you know, two political parties mm. opposing and sort of in battle. And we talked about it being a, almost like a gladiator arena yeah, where yeah. you perform, right? Mm. And then now he's like, oh, you know, I don't like what he said and I ask him for apology. Uh, yes and no. La. Why? Yes, because it feels like, okay, in the grander scheme of things, mm. there's so many things that we need to talk about or we, we should have. Oh, so you're saying, yes, it sounds a bit petty. La. Oh yeah, just oh, okay. on on in okay, one, on one okay. hand, okay. Uh, that given the breadth of everything we need to discuss and our leaders need to discuss and we need to figure out as a nation, mm. but no, on the other hand, in the sense that this is exactly what needs to be done more, I think, mm. because especially for the opposition members, it feels like they're always thrown with this. Like, okay, if you want, you do la. I if you want to accuse us of this, mm. you bring the bring this and blah, blah, blah. and then it feels like okay, this is taking it to them la, and doing exactly what the process is supposed to be. So I think it is It is more important than Petty. La. Mm, mm. For you? Yeah. I mean, think about it. We're in the age of Pofma right now. Mm. Every weekend, new Pofma saying that, oh, this fake news, this, this mm. was it. And I think, if anything, this is a very clear-cut case that uh, someone said that the other person said something that they did not say, la, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, if, I mean, yeah, you can't throw a Pofma because they got parliamentary privilege and all. But... Mm. An apology, lor. An yeah, apology is in and order, retractment, la. Retractment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's if we're in that, uh, in the spirit of, of uh, you know, calling out fake news and all that, then I think whatever quarters it is, whether it's parliament or the public or you know online or what, then it should just be applied equally, lah, mm. and to the fullest measure of whatever the rules are in that space. And in this space, it is them him requesting that through the Speaker of Parliament for an apology. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, now it almost feels like part of the M- uh, uh, MP's job scope is like every week must look, okay, what do I need to puff ma? <laughs> because even Shamugam two days ago, he issued like two two clarifications that he's going to file a complaint against. Like one was the the supposed post by his ex-wife that was... But is that Pofmat? Is that Pofmat? No, it's not Pofmat. It's like, Pofmat. like basically saying it's fake yeah, and he's going to yeah, file a police a report. Police report yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, in the vein of like, uh, how you say, uh, the ex, uh, making a statement that something is not true. Mm, uh, mm. And, and I mean, going back to what I said, in fact, I wouldn't even say it's petty in this context because as a politician, as a public figure, people are going to hold you to your words. Mm, mm. If Murali is saying that Leong Manwai said this and this and this, that can stay for a long fucking time online, man. Yeah. And it can yeah. shape people's perceptions of you. La. And they'll keep. And people, other other MPs or what, can build on what was what 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 was claimed that you said, la, right? Yeah. You can build it in the future speech. And then 
having to backtrack and go and like, you know, I never said that, I never said that like two months, three months, six months down the road. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's way too much trouble. The yeah. best is just nip in the butt if, if it's a problem now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what's not good are uh, comments on Leong Man Wai's post like saying in response to Murali is he shouldn't flip Prata but do the right thing, retract and apologize. Do you need the Prata reference? <laughs> Why, why, why? What's wrong with the Prata reference? I mean, it just I mean, it's, feels it's, la, like... like that's what Singaporeans, we all say. What We say if you flip-flop, you have roti prata. Why, why? why? Oh, is it? Is it? Huh? Then choose some, some other analogy. La. Oh, you're making the... this... Are you not... <laughs> I'm not going to ask it, but are you making it about that issue? I might again? be, I might be. Looking I might through be. the... The, the those, lens. Those lenses. I got the lens. Okay, the racial okay. lens. Let me, let me take off my lens. Oh, oh okay. God. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I would, that never even crossed my yeah, mind. Yeah, because... It never crossed my mind. <laughs> Because <laughs> of my... <laughs> I never say. I never say. I never say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but solid lah, young man. Why? Um, and he has the full yeah. text of his complaint also. Like, he has a longer blog post talking about it also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah, it was uh, in response to a bill that he was pushing for. Lah, yeah. That Murali said he's advocating for low rent control. What about this uh, new speaker of parliament, Xia Kimping? First Woo! day... First month in really straight away. Wow. Yeah, first in month is like I mean line of fire. I'm sure he knew what was coming also. La. He knew la. And yeah, and, and I think yeah, given all the scandals that have happened in Parliament recently, it's a it's a different age where his role will be much more closely scrutinized than any previous speaker of parliament, la, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also because like I mean it's only in like the past what, five years that uh, Parliament is live streamed. Mm, Last mm, time, if you were a speaker, but Parliament not live stream, I mean, it still yeah. feels like okay, like you don't have the public scrutiny to worry yeah, about, yeah. But this one is like wah 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 wah. You think Xia Kimping has like, like he needs to build up the muscle memory of like uh, switching off the hot mic everywhere he goes now. So like he always like everywhere he goes, you just talk to him, he's always reaching for something to no, make sure. <laughs> no, like I'm pretty memory. sure that there there's something they're putting in the mics of Parliament for motion detection or oh, something. AI. You think about your iPhone, you lift it up to your face, it comes oh, out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So hot mic, maybe like if there's nothing blocking a sensor or something, it just turns off. Oh, so yeah. you need to stand. It's like, you know, you wash your hands at the bathroom. Correct, correct. Uh, you put your hand there at the sensor. So same thing with a hot mic. Why must make them press? Mm. Uh, but then of course, I mean, this is the same place that also still uses three times 20 cent coin lockers. La, that's, so. true, la, that's true. <laughs> that's so true. you're asking them to install motion sensor for hot mic. I'm like, mm, that is true. Maybe there are other priorities for oh, us to, but to fix it. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Probably in 2028, la, then maybe yeah. they can find something better for a hot mic. Because it yeah. feels like a problem that has been existing for a long ass time in yeah. parliaments across the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one has 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 disrupted the space, la. Yeah, and the funny thing about Parliament, you know the the rostrum that, yeah. that they always speak from. Apparently, you know, is you can raise yeah. it and lower it. <laughs> then some MPs have this habit of like they they use it. They after they finish it, then they have to like lower it for whoever the next person is. <laughs> then it's like they say something already, drop the mic, then they. It's always like very anti-climax yeah, yeah. when you see it, right? That's something that you also don't see on TV, but it's yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when uh, Pritam was having that three-way debate, I think Shamogam uses it a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you see him come out and paste the same thing like, Doo. Doo. <laughs> <laughs> he comes up, then he puts his iPad and talk. Wow, it's hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's true, uh, that's true. Yeah, so Only you can see in, in, in public. Uh. Yeah, so the tech within parliament, I think a lot of uh, places where it can still... But I mean, oh, you mean yeah. what? Something faster? No, uh, that's really high tech. Uh. Or auto, uh, like based on the person's height, then someone, you know, a, a controller or what. But then they cannot start that. talking with that, that, that servo sound still coming up. Uh. That's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that Shamukov is laying down like the smackdown or Pritam laying down the... And there's a maybe it builds anticipation also lah, right? When mm. when someone coming out the talk, then you expect them to hear the talk, then it's it's a power play lah. It's a power play. Oh yeah, you know maybe, they say yeah. yeah yeah don't 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 like immediately like come out with your emotions. Or maybe they mask the sound with like a drum roll or something like you know like when you pee in those Japanese toilets, <laughs> oh, they, they play flush. music. Right? This one is. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, but yeah lah, yeah lah. Interesting next month lah, gonna be. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, but cool. Yes. Shall we jump to the one short comment? Yes. Uh, one short comment. What's your one short comment? Yes. Uh, I think my one short comment at this point. Mm, mm. So, not like a. Wait, uh, let me see. I think generally I'm very uh heartened by the comments on YouTube also mm, because. Mm. Uh, I mean, like uh, on on our podcast, on our Reddit, 
uh, the comments for yesterday's episode with Ang Kok Song, um, I think still gathering steam. Mm. Uh, but on YouTube, quite a few people have have commented already and um, just shared quite honest thoughts. Yeah. Uh, like one of them pointed out that, you know, yeah, about that part when Ang Kok Song said, for your own personal dignity, do something, don't be lazy. Mm, mm, that mm. they were impressed, but when it reached this part, it felt like the, the same corporate rhetoric. La. Yeah. And just challenging that. La. Uh, I like the the, pers- the the thought by verse lines. Mm. Uh, just shed that, that opinion. And okay, like, yes, if you want to max out your work and make that your life, that's fine. But don't shit on people who uh, want to just maybe be less ambitious or do do nothing as intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, which which I also did feel when Ang Kok Song said that. Mm. So I just thought, okay, it's nice that it's not just comments like, oh, we love you or like we hate you, but just sharing your thoughts that go against like uh, certain things that were said on the podcast. Like. And balance that. Some of them yeah. said they, they, you know, everything else that, about the interview they liked. Maybe there was that one comment that they didn't like so much. Right? Mm. Someone did say, this is the worst podcast in this channel. Please do not do it again or it'll be very sad for me to answer. Uh, yeah. That's the so, thing, uh, like YouTube, like the YouTube, subbing uh, is like uh, they weaponize people. People weaponize, weaponize. the sub- subbing sometimes. I know it's, we say it's important, yes, but but sometimes you know it's like yeah, like if if this if our content really rouses you up or that, yeah. sometimes it's so for your mental health it's also don't. It might just be a bot or something, like. Could be, could be, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, what about you? Uh, uh my one true comment actually is actually a question for you from Hopeful Pickle Five, mm. who was reacting to something you said in the previous podcast about. Uh, I think we we're talking about. Uh, do Singaporeans support local football, uh, right? Mm. The comment was like, Oh, Harish, how come you didn't enjoy Ajuma? Genuinely oh. curious. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, well, I want to leave the floor open for you to sure. sort of answer the question. Because I think you touched on it, but you didn't yeah. explain why. La. So, I mean, Ajuma was a movie that I had thought had so much potential. Uh, where Because it was a collaboration between Singapore and uh, Korea. La. So, mm. part of it was filmed in Singapore, part of it was filmed in Korea. And it was very really beautifully shot. I mm. thought the acting was good. But just the story. La. Certain parts mm. of it felt like it didn't make sense. And the whole film felt more indulgent in the look of it or the themes it was talking about than just a story that makes sense. Mm. Where you show like uh, that, that it's entertaining and where there's, there's something that's satisfying at the end. La. You see the protagonist, the main character, get something that has meaning and depth. Mm. So I felt like, oh shit, is this just like a... It, I was disappointed because I thought it had so much potential. The people behind it were very talented, the actors, but it just felt short of the story. Mm, mm. Yeah, and I felt like it could have been a shorter movie. It was just so long. Yeah. 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 So so yeah, that that I hope that shed some light. Maybe it's for, for them also to share what they liked about it, because it sounds like mm. they liked it. Yeah. 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 Actually that that's probably even the the reason why I bring up this one short comments. I want to hear why people liked it that mm. much, like, right? Because mm. uh you and I, we are, you know, uh, dead inside. Uh, we're cynics. And, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but, but the truth is, I think there are people who said they, they love it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah they I would love to, like, hear uh, point by point, like, why they liked it. And, and just for me to understand, oh, this is what people... But you say you're dead you. inside, so for you, your sentiments on the film? Yeah, la, I mean, I, I didn't really connect with the mm. characters very much. Or maybe there are just certain points I, I just felt like... This is not in line with what the character should be doing, or the you know. Yeah. So I can't I can't speak for if that the final cut of the film was exactly what the director envisioned. Maybe there mm. were. I mean, for every show, we did, even ours, lah, right? Budget yeah, constraints, yeah, correct, correct. personnel constraints, whatever constraints that that there are. So you know, they they did something that you know uh, worked maybe for their audience, but yeah, it wasn't for me, lah. Yeah, it wasn't for me also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't for me. We just did inside, lah. <laughs> we just like shitting on on stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. But yes. Cool. Uh, speaking of uh, shitting on stuff, there's also stuff that we don't shit on. Yes. Our one shot things. Yes. And uh, what's your one shot thing? My one shot thing is um, something that I'm just so happy mm. uh, about a recent movie that came out. Mm. Uh, and I think you probably have heard of this also. Do you remember the YouTube channel Raka Raka? No, I don't actually. I think you have seen some videos. Probably. What what did it? They had this Australian pair of brothers okay. that basically turned Nerf gun fights into super bloody and gory. Uh, or they have like uh, Ronald McDonald versus uh, someone else and they just make it gory and they choreograph it like action sequences. Like. Uh, so we've actually definitely, you've, you've definitely seen it because I think yeah. for previous videos we've we have looked at them and like, oh shit, yeah. they do some awesome shit. And if you look at their history, they started off on YouTube. Same thing, they just, at home, they just use like Nerf guns but then they 
They use ketchup for blood and mm. they're also very funny. Yeah. So over the years, they grew quite a following, few million subscribers or quite a decent amount. But they just did their first movie. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Called Talk To Me. Okay. And it's, I saw the trailer, it's fucking scary as shit. So I'm probably not going to watch it. Is it. Horror, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, but they've also been getting rave reviews from Jordan Peele. Mm. Uh, Ari Esther, who's the director of Hereditary, which okay. was like a, a cult favorite, right? Okay. And even the latest person is Peter Jackson. All of them are getting in touch with them to just congratulate them on on uh, what Peter Jackson calls as the best and most intense horror he has seen in years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and and there's an article that I read that talks about their journey and how they just are so so happy that this year multiple year long journey that started on YouTube has resulted in a movie that they premiered at Sundance has been picked mm. up by A24, which is quite mm. a big mm. yeah. uh, movie studio. Yeah. Yeah, and like wow, oh, solid lah. Mm. Solid, mm. fucking great. Love it. Nice. Yeah, so that's my one shock thing. Nice. Uh, my one shock thing is uh, this Instagram account that I just recently was recommended to me or I discovered was it's called After Death Comics. Mm. So uh, I mean, it's I think it's got around like sixty thousand followers on Instagram now. So it's not huge, mm. but uh, very funny. It's just one two panel comics about um a lot of times about like fairy tale characters. Mm. Uh, whether it's like the Frog Prince or, or you know the Wicked, uh, the Wicked Witch in Hansel and Gretel, and all that, and uh, yeah, just just um, very each of these comics take very dark turns, mm. Uh, for example, like the the Frog Prince wants to be kissed to become a human, but keeps asking, you know, keeps uh asking to the to be kissed longer, la. As like a very creepy, <laughs> like creepy frog that just keeps <laughs> like hugs you for too long or kisses you for too long kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's just all these funny, funny, like uh, dark, humorous uh, takes on classic children's fairy tales and, and you know, things that um not necessarily, yeah, in pop culture or even just about like, when we talk about like spirits or ghosts and, and things uh, like that. Yeah, so it's it's... It's pretty funny, uh. It's pretty funny. And oh, it's right. Humpty Dumpty as well. Humpty Dumpty, all this. <laughs> so it's quite funny. And uh yeah, it, it's it's I think it's uh it's probably gonna be big at some point. So yeah, just go check it out to see oh, that you were there first. Cool, man. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, nice. awesome. Uh yeah, so thanks so much for listening, everybody, and we will definitely be back soon.